Now, today we will be talking about how to write the, the discussion chapter, that's the last chapter of your thesis, and also the abstract on the description page. So those are the things that we will be going through very fast. You will do the abstract in both languages. So Finnish students, they will do the abstract, the description page in English and in Finnish. The maturity test, you can choose uh, the language. You can do English or Finnish, it's up to you. So you have done your empirical study and you have found the answers to your research questions. You are at the last chapter called discussion. What are you going to do here? So this is not going to be a very long chapter. It's about seven, eight pages, but of course we see variations. I've seen much longer uh, chapters. We will be also looking very briefly to the discussion chapter of Nina Poronen, which is, which is actually uh, 15 pages. So uh, the length may vary, but you know, you should expect a uh, minimum or on average seven, eight pages. And we have here five items included. So that means that you should spare about two pages, one and a half, two pages per, per item. So how do we start? We'll go through all of these one by one. We start by reminding the reader what was the objective of the thesis? What were your research questions? So this is like the conclusion chapter. And then very briefly, what answers did you get for your uh, research questions? Of course, in the results chapter, you provide in detail the answers. Here, the idea is not to rewrite all of that, but to very briefly summarize, okay, what? What are the answers very briefly? So that is the first uh, section under uh, the discussion chapter. Now, after that, we want to understand uh, what does your findings, what do your findings uh, mean for different kinds of stakeholders? So usually it will be managers, company managers, but depending on the nature of the thesis, as we will see in Nina's uh, thesis, there can be different kinds of stakeholders, policy makers uh, and other stakeholders that uh, you may uh, think about. What, do your, what are the implications of your findings to those stakeholders? And of course, the main stakeholder will be managers. So based on your findings, what do you recommend them? What should they do to improve the situation? This is important and now I want to also uh, connect this with our assessment criteria. We have in our Bible, the assessment criteria, five types of criteria, right? And this fourth one called thesis, called thesis reflection. This is the set of criteria that we specifically assess by reading the discussion chapter. And out of those, the last one that you see here, presentation of conclusions. Now, being a University of Applied Sciences, we are especially interested in whether your findings are going to improve something in uh, practice, right? So can we apply your findings that managers can improve some things in their work. So here we can see the grade of five, that's the, that's the uh, box, the column at the very right. The presented conclusions are innovative further actions and development proposals that develop the professional field industry. So 
what are the recommendations that you make for the managers? And these should not be just out of the blue. They should be linked from your findings. You found some things. You have the results, which you summarized in the previous section, 5.1. Now in 5.2, based on those results, who will benefit? What do you recommend that somebody benefits? The managers benefit, policymakers benefit. So this is the section that uh, will determine the benefits, the implications for these stakeholders. Practical implications. The next subsection is the assessment of the results in the light of earlier literature. We have seen good examples of this during the presentations today. Now you have your results. How do you compare them with the earlier literature? Is there something new that you found that did not exist in the literature? Or have your findings been mostly confirming what has been said before? And this is a subchapter which requires uh, citations from earlier literature. So when I read 5.3, I want to see citations and not that, I, I don't, what I wouldn't want to see is that, uh, is you're saying that my results are in line with earlier literature, okay? Don't say such general things. Your which result is in line with, with which finding from which earlier literature. So be specific, that will increase the value of your thesis. Making a sentence like, okay, my findings are different from earlier literature in this respect, is not clear to the reader. Which finding are you talking about and which literature has not mentioned that? So that needs to be, and remember, this chapter is called discussion. So it means that in all sections, you are expected to elaborate and discuss. So here is the chapter that we are looking after your intellectual capability and contribution that are you able to discuss looking backwards at your results? How do they compare with the earlier literature? So this is what is uh, asked in 5.3. And here, as you will see, we have a criterion about that called dialogue between key results and the theory. You will be also self-assessing your thesis at the very end. That will be one of the uh, requirements that you return also together with your thesis. Always look at these criteria because this is what we will use when assessing your thesis. So use these when you are writing your thesis, which will help you for writing a better thesis. So for the grade of five, what we see is that in the reflection, the key results outputs are considered insightfully using the knowledge base and displaying academic expertise. That means you have already made an up-to-date uh, diverse literature review. So your literature review already shows the expertise. And here we see the expertise, how you can link your findings to the earlier literature. Next is what I call here limitations. This could be also called in, if you go back to the, uh, if you go back to the criteria, this is about assessment of, of the reliability, reliability of the work. So, Looking before going to what we will cover under uh, limitations, let's have a look as we are on this slide, what we mean 
for this criterion. So the reliability assessment is thorough and the consideration is reflective and critical. Remember, we are talking about a discussion. So here now, the thesis is over. Earlier in chapter three, under the methodology chapter, in the last section called verification of findings, you already wrote about what you will do to make sure that your results and your results are valid and reliable. Now the thesis is over, you are looking backwards. Do you think that your findings are reliable and valid? This is the discussion that we are looking after. In doing that, you should be discussing with yourself in an objective manner. Do not write there that this thesis is very reliable and very valid. Whatever you think, always justify why. Well, it, it can be that, you know, it is, and it is expected to be reliable and valid. You are expected to take care of certain measures to achieve that. Here, looking backwards, you should assess it that, okay, I believe that my results are reliable because I used reliable sources, uh, etc. Some things that should be discussed here, the name limitations already rings the bell. Were there any limitations in terms of access to data? I noticed in the earlier presentations, I think by our Italian students, that under limitations, they mentioned limitations of the literature, right? For example, uh, I remember the first Lorenzo's presentation, he was saying that there wasn't much literature about this topic, academic literature. Now here, the limitation is not about whether there is earlier literature or not, but limitations of your empirical study. Empirical study means collecting the data, analyzing the data. It can be a limitation, that you are not able to access primary data. Ehsan, for example, mentioned that he needed to change his company because he was not given access to strategy related uh, data by some of the ideal companies that he considered ideal for his uh, topic. So that is a, that is a limitation. So there may be a number of limitations and that need to be brought forward. No research is without limitations. One way or the other, you face some of these and here is the time that you should discuss about them. And in doing that, you should be objective. Then when we talk about validity, we talk about two types of validity. Internal validity, external validity. Internal validity is internally, meaning starting from your research questions and all the way to your results, is there some consistency? Are your results matching with your research questions? If you think about the thesis of, uh, the thesis by Paolo, his research questions were about what are the hidden costs of offshoring, right? And then when he presented the results, before hitting costs, he talked about triggers, benefits, costs, and finally came hidden costs. So are the answers matching with the questions? If not, why not? Why do, you, why do we have in your results the benefits of offshoring when your research question is about what are the hidden costs of offshoring, right? So this is internal validity. How do you achieve that? You achieve that by making sure that you review the relevant literatures, find a theoretical framework that aims to answer your research questions and using that in your empirical study, in designing your interview survey questions, and also in using them, in using the framework in also analyzing your data. 
So that helps to achieve internal validity. External validity is important, especially for qualitative research. To what extent can you generalize your findings? So we saw that many of the students had case company uh, qualitative research, case study research. The findings that you come up with, can you generalize them to other companies in the same industry, in the same country, or can you generalize them to any companies in any country? So what is the extent? So this is a very good discussion point, generalizability. That's external validity. We already talked about reliability. And of course, especially in uh, qualitative research, objectivity, that is the fourth thing to discuss, is, is uh, always questionable because if, let's say, we have the same transcribed data and if I'm going to analyze it using the framework, if Yaoming is going to analyze it, do we come up with the same results? So are we objective in qualitative, how, how objective are we in qualitative research? Uh, that can be also one point to discuss. Finally, we end the thesis, the chapter, with some suggestions for future research. So now you have done your research. If next year some other student wants to take over from where you left, what would you recommend? And in this section, uh, I, would, I would perhaps like to see, uh, I, I should say three, that's an ideal number, uh, suggestions for future research. And remember, these suggestions need to be related to where you left. So they shouldn't come from out of the blue. Of course, very reasonable suggestions for qualitative research is to replicate similar kind of research in other industries, other countries, uh, to conduct quantitative studies to uh, test your findings. So these are very uh, typical suggestions that you may have independent of whatever your topic is. Now, what are the issues here? Basically, when you have the results, you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm already done. I'm almost done. So that's the first challenge. S second challenge, because at that moment, you are also tired. You know, you want to get rid of the thesis. You know, I'm almost there. Let me finish it and, you know. And third thing is this discussion requires a higher level of intellectual contribution. So you need to start thinking to discuss. Right? So tired, you need to think, and you are under pressure. Sometimes there are different uh, pressures, time pressure. Some students are just running out of their study rights, period. So under these pressures, uh, you may not give the maximum efforts to this, uh, to this chapter. And unfortunately, this chapter equals one out of four almost 25%, one out of five, sorry, almost 20% of your final grade. So this is, this is very important if you are especially targeting the grade of five, that put your utmost energy at this chapter. And some words about the description page, the abstract. So, this is going to be like the executive summary of your thesis. There are some instructions in the template about what should be included. And basically you start with uh, some background information. What were the objectives? You don't need to mention the research questions. And then in meeting those objectives, what did you do? What was your theoretical framework, for example? 
following literature review, you used the following theoretical framework that you can introduce. You can tell about a bit about the methodology, what did you do in your empirical study. But then the biggest part should be spared to your findings. What did you find out? What are your answers? What are the results? And do, in doing that, of course, uh, you should be as uh, specific as, as possible. I see some question from Colette. Are citations a part of this last chapter? Uh, yes, especially in comparing your, uh, comparing your results with the earlier literature, uh, we expect to see uh, citations, but not when you are talking about managerial implications. There may be some citations when you talk about limitations, citations to the methodology literature. And then, of course, uh, future research avenues, well, probably not needed citations. And uh, description page, the focus, the main area is the results. What did you find? And in doing that, of course, you shouldn't be saying very round words. You should be as specific as possible. But of course, you can write the whole results chapter. So you should pick up the most important results from your, uh, from your thesis. You will also share in uh, some keywords at the end. There is a section on keywords. Uh, every important thing is that every thesis should have an assigner. This will be an assigner company, or if no company, then the thesis should be assigned by what we call Young Center for Competitiveness. So the assigner section should not be left empty. And when you get feedback about your, uh, about your uh, thesis, the description page, remember, for language check, you don't need to wait the last moment to send it to Hannu Rünenen. When you have about 20, 30 pages, that's the time that you send it and get feedback on your language. But then at the very end, the abstracts, in Hannah's case, both the English and the Finnish versions, should be sent to Hannu for his feedback. Because these are the pages that will definitely be read by the thesis committee members and they should be perfect. Sometimes there are issues, you want to write lots of things, but space is limited. So you cannot exceed one page. What you can do, you can play with, there are the lines of the different sections you can make some areas, like for example, the last uh, row, it's called miscellaneous. And I haven't seen almost anybody write anything there. So you can make that smaller so that you get more space for the abstract for uh, the part that you will be writing most of the text. That's the description page. Uh, for this assign Confidential. Yeah, case company. Case company. So if you have a, if your uh, assigner, the company, wants to be anonymous, then you just say case company. So let's briefly look at the let's briefly look at the discussion chapter and abstract of the thesis of Nina Poronen. 
in the last couple of minutes. So here under the sample thesis, we have the thesis of Nina. And if we start looking straight from the table of contents, we say that it starts on page 85 and ends on page 99. So about 15 pages answering the research questions. Now the order is not the same, comparing the results with earlier literature. Okay. Then comes practical implications. Then comes theoretical contributions. Well, this is not what perhaps is expected that you have some theoretical contributions that's more reserved paper for the uh, doctoral thesis. Even if you would like to add that, perhaps the order is a bit like, okay, comparison with earlier literature, that's, you know, comparison with the theories and then practical implications and then back to theoretical contributions. Maybe you could do the order a bit differently. And perhaps you would, you could indeed, uh, indeed uh, combine it, merge it with uh, the 6.2. So 6.2 and 6.2 could be merged. Then we have 6.5 limitations of the research and then comes reliability and validity. So those sections could also be merged under the same topic, under the same uh, number. And then finally recommendations for future research. So overall it covers almost everything and even more than expected. But there are some good things, there are some bad things. I would like to especially draw your attention to the practical implication parts. Starting, let's go to page 90. So here, Practical implications. So she has found implications uh, that are common to all, you remember this thesis, right? It's about the bioeconomic cluster in central Finland, about uh, new business development. So there are some implications that are for all cluster member members. But then she has, for different stakeholders, different types of members of the cluster, she has implications for companies, research centers, educational institutions, financing providers, regional development organizations, government, cluster organizations. So for all these different types of stakeholders, she has provided some suggestions. Now I could perhaps criticize saying that as the name of the chapter is discussion, having bullet points for the suggestions is not enough. It should be a bit opened up and discussed, but given the diversity of the actors and already the 15 pages that have been uh, for the discussion chapter, I, I keep my criticism to myself and, and think that it's appropriate to have the, the uh, bullet points. And let's also have a look at the description page very briefly. So she has it in both languages, in English and in Finnish. And if you look at the, if you look at the structure, you see here Young Center for Competitiveness. That's the, uh, that's the assigner. And remember that you make sure you you fill these you fill these areas accordingly, the right degree program. So when you look at the abstract, we see 
with some background information about the bioeconomy strategy of, of, of Finland, its importance, its goals. So the first paragraph is kind of motivating us about the need for the research and it ends with the need for new business development is evident. So the strategy, the situation, so it's a sort of background information to motivate the reader. And the second paragraph starts with stating the aim of the research. So what was the objective of the research? So speaking specifically about the, about the uh, thesis. And then also informing about the theoretical framework that was used. Informing about the methodology. So don't go, when you say, when, you, when we take methodology, don't go into detail about how many interviews you did, how many, you know, this is only to present very briefly the key points because space is limited. Uh, you can't provide all the details. So how you do the, how you did the thesis, what was the objective and how you achieved that objective? That's the second paragraph. And the third paragraph, here comes the research results. So this is the biggest paragraph to tell us about the results. And here you can also add, as you see, some suggestions for, for future research. That's it clear, simple, and focused, specific about your thesis. It's like the executive summary. This is the last of our seminars this semester. Any questions about the discussion chapter? Any questions about the abstract description page? Use the summer productively to progress with your thesis, hopefully. You know, you make the suggestions, but uh, it's uh, not easy always to, you know, uh, implement it. But hopefully you can progress and we will be meeting in the autumn semester uh, with our seminars. And during those seminars, uh, hopefully we will see some of you presenting what you have progressed with. Uh, so whatever new chapters you have covered, you are most welcome to present them. Uh, and we will be having the workshops, of course, related to uh, your issues, your problems. So we will dedicate the, the, uh, the last semester. So the, the thesis process is a two year process. So now you've been through one and a half years. You have only one last semester left. And during that semester, uh, we'll be working on you know, your problems. We have covered all the, all the chapters of the thesis. Uh, there are the videos available for each chapter that you can go back and uh, rewatch. There are the slides. And we will also cover last as the last thing, uh, what are the last steps when you are almost done? So we will have one uh, lecture kind of session where I will introduce the last things you need to keep in mind uh, when you are finishing your thesis. So the last practicalities. But other than that, I think uh, you are already equipped with all the information that you need for writing a successful thesis. And I wish you all a beautiful summer and a very good um, progress with your thesis and look forward to see you next autumn. Thank you very much. <laughs>